Today, I want to talk about polyrhythms. So I've talked about polyrhythms before, and I used shapes to represent the different subdivisions. A triangle for three subdivisions, a square for four subdivisions, and so on. The problem I ran into was that at a certain point, the shapes start looking more and more like circles. It gets harder and harder to see the smaller and smaller sides of the polygons. And then this amazing human commented, Why not turn the polygons into stars? That way you have points along the edge, and it won't look so much like a circle. So that's what I'm going to do today. We're making polyrhythms using stars. So let's go. Imagine that this dotted circle is our one beat. And we can subdivide it into as many smaller equal pieces as we want. So if we cut it in half, we now have two equal beats. Now we have a one against two pattern. If we want three equal beats, last time we used a triangle, but this time we're going to use a three-pointed star like this. So now we have a two against three pattern. Let's keep going. A four-pointed star looks like this, and since it overlaps the two points of the two pattern, let's just listen to the three against four to see what that sounds like. Let's subdivide again using a five-pointed star like this, and let's listen to what a four against five pattern sounds like. I want to pause here for a second and let you know that just because we've been looking at the last two subdivisions as we go along, so two against three, three against four, four against five, doesn't mean that those are the only polyrhythms. You can play any of these subdivisions against each other and have a different polyrhythm, like five against two. against five. Okay, we'll keep going like before, but just remember that you can play any of these subdivisions against each other and have a different polyrhythm. So a six pointed star looks like this and five against six sounds like this. A 
A seven pointed star looks like this, and six against seven sounds like this. I'm gonna skip the eight pointed star because it overlaps a lot of the same points beneath it, like the two and four pointed star. So it doesn't add a whole lot of new rhythm to the polyrhythm, so we'll go to the nine pointed star instead. And seven against nine sounds like this. Then an 11 pointed star and nine against 11 sounds like this. Then a 13 pointed star and 11 against 13 sounds like this. and a 17 pointed star, and 13 against 17 sounds like this. And this is as far as I got in the animation with the time that I had to make this video, but I do think that using stars instead of straight edged polygons does have its merits. It's definitely easier to read as you increase the number of subdivisions, and it seems to add more information in between the beats because you see the dot move along that curved edge. It's definitely more interesting visually, but I think I would still use the straight edged polygons for a beginner and only move to the star shapes after they understood the simpler shapes. But this was a really fun exercise. And I couldn't leave you without playing all of the different polyrhythms together. So here is a one against two against three against four against five against six against seven against nine against 11 against 13 against 17 polyrhythm. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to my patrons on Patreon who help make these videos possible. If you would like to support the channel or learn more about becoming a patron, check out our Patreon link below.